All right, cool beans. Hope you guys did enjoy that small montage. I'm Hex. I'm going to be going over my updated Mag Warden build for the update 39 patch. Before I get those angry comments, this is very identical. This build is very identical to the previous one. So if you did watch that previous video, the build video is very identical. Just giving you some great alternatives and see what's changed for the update 39, if anything, for this patch. That's basically it. Before I get those angry comments. If you are sane enough to run Magwarden, you are either running in BGs or you are running in a group slash Zerg. But if you are a glutton for pain, you can 1vx with it. I just want a quick disclaimer. This is more of a BG slash group slash Zerg group build. Like Magwarden is terrible for 1vx open world. It's, it's awful for open world 1vx. Can you do it? Yes. If you're a glutton for pain, yes, you can do it. I've done it. It's, it's possible. It's legit a pug. It's a pug destroyer. Like legit, Mag Warden is there to put a lot of pressure on sweats and just absolutely just melt with pugs away. So that's why it's really good. But if you're solo, you're never really gonna be bursting sweat. So like, but if you're in a group, <laughs> uh, you do some ridiculous amounts of damage. Especially in BG, since everyone's such an enclosed area, you're just doing massive amounts of damage. Mag Warden unfortunately needs to run all the process it can have and trust me we have a lot of cheesy set and forget damage like that's what Mag Warden is all about set and forget and it just does so much pressure so much crazy damage but how exactly we get the strong build in order stick around to the end and I'll show you exactly how before we get started hit the like subscribe button support me on patreon follow me on twitch also I am thinking about posting my just raw gameplay on a separate channel probably hexavods I will either have it made by the time this video is done or maybe soon so just where I can post just my random like my vods just like raw gameplay so you guys can see that because if I were to post it on the main channel it, the way YouTube works it's just it's just weird like it's it's gonna hurt the channel so it should be best if I just make a separate account I don't know why <laughs> but without further ado let's shock so into the build All right, so first skill we do run, this is actually our flex spot. I like Fetcher Infection. Honestly, it's a really good dot, lasts for a long time. The second cast actually does bonus damage. And the main thing is you can put Minor Vuln on the target and you can apply this to multiple targets for that Minor Vuln, which is really, really powerful in my opinion. However, you can, if you want to replace this for any skill, you can replace it. The ones I recommend, you can replace it for the Healing Vines. Honestly, you can run either Morph, really good if you want an extra heal on the build. You could run the crystallized shield same thing you could run either morph you could run the one that stuns them is an annoying that's something that would be the most cheesiest one or you could put the one that puts major heroism and just spam those ultimates or you could run blood mist honestly blood mist would be very very strong on the build gives you mobility gives you a dot an extra dot on the build it also procs our monster set which is really good damage and you also get 300 weapon spell damage after casting the skill let's see up to you personally I just like this skill, gives us passes for having it slotted, and I can put this on multiple targets. Next skill is Bird of Prey. This is basically our snare mini that just happens to grant major expedition while casted, and it gives you minor berserk just for having it slotted. You just put the skill on, you do 5% bonus damage, and it gives you passes for having it slotted. Like, <laughs> what a crack skill. Next skill is Lotus Blossom. This is another crack skill. This is basically one of those skills if you wonder. If you know why this skill is good, then you probably know ESO very well and you can build your own builds. If not, then you're probably still learning or maybe you got your head up your, you know what. But anyways, <laughs> so basically this skill cost is very cheap. Under a thousand mag, that's dirt cheap. And it lasts for a minute, that's... Anytime you do a light attack, you heal for over 1500, which is tripled if you fully charge a heavy. But the main thing is, while active, Increases your weapon and spell crit by 12% for both bars. Yes, you cast the skill, you get a heal, and you get your major crits. So basically, you just frees up our potion slots, which is just insane. Next skill is Deep Fissure. This is basically what sets up the burst. You stir up some shocks, deals damage after 3 seconds, and then you go back underground and resurface after 6 seconds after the initial one. 
I didn't know this. It took me a while to realize this. The resurface actually does bonus damage. So the first time it goes off, the second time it goes off, off the original cast, it actually does like 33% bonus damage, give or take, which is actually really strong. So if you wanted to burst somebody, go off the resurface. But whether or not you hit them with the resurface doesn't matter. The main thing, you put major and minor breach. Yes, both major and minor breach. Basically getting almost 9K armor shred on a target. That is a ridiculous amount of armor shed in AOE. So it hits ridiculously hard, a lot of targets, and it puts major, like it's just a crazy skill. If you put this on a pin, you're gonna hit so many targets and just shred so much armor. And for our spammable, we do run Frost Reach. Honestly, you could run either morph. Uh, they're perfectly fine. I like this morph because I could cast this from a mile away and it still keeps the dot. The other morph, it, does, it removes the dot and it has a short range. However, you do root them, you do put major maim, and you do taunt them, which I guess could come in handy maybe. I don't know. Either morph is fine. If for those wondering, where do you find this skill? So when you go to the destruction staff skill, because I did get a few comments, just go right there. Destructive reach, basically destructive touch morph. Right there. Once you have this slotted, it goes to whatever staff you have equipped. So since we have an I staff equipped, it becomes Frost Reach. And I didn't even read the best part. Anytime you hit a target with this initial hit, you put Chilled on the target, which is minor, main 5% damage reduction. But the main thing, when you put Chilled on a target with an I staff equipped, which we do have double barred, we put Minor Brittle on the target, making them take 10% bonus damage from all crits. Your crits, your allies crits, the enemy alliance or team crits, it will all shred them, which is just insane. And this is also how we proc our arena weapon. Don't know what arena weapon is? Stick around to the sets and I'll show you exactly what it is. For ultimate, obviously, Dawn Breaker of Smiting. This is my go-to ultimate. Since we are playing more in melee range, this is just a perfect ultimate. Does ridiculous amount of death damage in a cone in front of you, stuns them for two seconds, and if they're able to tell the tale of the Dawnbreaker, well, that dot's for sure gonna put them down. What's well, so good about this, it does a lot of damage and it stuns them to just set up the burst, and I've burst with so many people with this before. Some great alternatives, you could put Meteor there if you want. You could put either one. Honestly, I, I like shooting star getting more ultimate, but if you want ice comet, it's there. I, I don't like it, but if you want it, it's there. And for our back bar, we do run ice fortress. This is basically the warden buff and thank Regine. It lasts for 30 seconds. And it also gets you minor protection while it's up. And that's a long time. Next skill is Blockade of Frost. This is basically how we proc our arena weapon and then also how we proc our enchant to just get over 450 weapon spell damage, which is just crazy on the build. This does decent damage with the arena weapon, it does really good damage. And while having an ice staff equipped, when you cast this skill, you get a shield against projectiles, which is really, really nice. I didn't know that until I just read it right now. I keep forgetting about that. But the crazy thing, it puts minor breach on them. So just in case we don't hit with the shocks, they have minor breach already from this and reduces their movement speed by 40%. So we could just have so much lockdown with this build. This is why it's very, very toxic in BGs, or if you're running a group in a keep, very toxic. Next skill we do run is Resolving Vigor. This is obviously our burst hot, heal it over five seconds, and grants us minor resolve. Next, we do run Blue Betty. This is basically how we get our 20% weapon spell damage, and we also get over like two, almost 200 maggot back every second. This thing is free, legit, this thing is free, and every time you cast it and every five seconds after casting, you remove a negative effect. And pro tip, if you didn't know this, every time you cast a skill, you get a heal. Look at that. So if you're ever burnt out of resources, you can just keep spamming the skill, purify yourself, and you'll keep getting your magic back no matter what. Like it's, it could honestly save your life. It has saved my life before. Next skill is Polar Wind. This is basically our burst heal. This heals us quite a bit. It scales off our max health. So depending on what mythic you will run, actually can scale this up even higher, and it heals an ally. The reason I run this morph, because it can heal an ally, and it puts a hot on both of us, which is really nice, because you know me, I like to fight out numbers, so I need all the healing I can get. But if you want to run the other morph, perfectly fine. Get that stun, get that damage around you, it's just pretty good. And for our back bar ultimate, we do run Northern Storm. This is basically, while we have the slot, we get almost 1k armor, so that's already a, a big plus right there. The thing is, when you cast a skill, you do a lot of damage around you. I mean, let's just buff up with 20% weapon. We get more, by the way, from our sets. Look at that. Around us, over 3k around us every second for 8 seconds. And reduces movement speed. And it grants us 300 weapon and spell damage, which all our proc sets, which we do run a lot of procs on this build. So that's just even extra bonus damage for that. And if that wasn't enough, major protection while, while it's up. Like, it's just a bloated skill. 
You could run permafrost. Honestly, I could perfectly see the understanding of running permafrost. I just like this skill because when I go in, I'm doing lots of damage. My processes are just going to amplify. So all my processes are just going to do so much damage with this. All right, but enough. Let's go to the stat sheets. Okay, so for our stat sheets, we will have to be outside of my house since I do need to get hit to proc a certain mythic. If you do run this mythic, there are two mythics you can run. I will be going over the main mythic, which is Sea Serpents. But for those that don't want to run Sea Serpents, they want to run Death Dealers, I will slightly go over that. Simple. So for this one, we just pop a simple tripod for both mythics. Max mag over 25k. Our max health, I mean, let's just heal up real quick. Is that our max health? Yep. Max health over 32.7k. And our max stam over 15k. And our recoves, mag recove over 1500. And our stam recove is just shy of 1300. Our mag recove might look a little low, but you have to realize we are heavily invested into reduced mag cost in the field. That's why it looks low. Plus, our racial passive is really strong. And we also get have a nesh that just refunds his magic straight up. And for our spell damage, might look low. I mean, 20% weapon spell damage, 3553. However, there are many ways to buff this. There are three things you can buff it with. We do have a front bar arena weapon. We do have our infused weapon of spell damage enchant on our back bar. And we do have our sea serpents coil mythic. So let's just buff up. And they're easy to get. They're very easy. This isn't very hard at all. Literally to get all this, all you have to do. Catch your netch. Catch your wall elements. Hit him with frost clench. Get hit at max health. And there you go. Let's just keep this buff up going. Look at that. Spell damage over 5400. And this thing died without even looking at it. <laughs> but you saw that. Over 5,400 weapon spell damage. Might look low, but you have to realize that is actually a lot of weapon spell damage because we are heavily invested into proxy damage. Yes, very much proxy damage. Now our weapon spell crit is just shy of 35%. Our spell crit can actually go up to almost 41%. So our spell crit can actually go up to almost 41% spell crit. We just gotta proc our poison. Let's see if we proc it. There you go, proc it. Look at that, almost 41% spell crit on this build, which is a lot of spell crit, and wardens do do extra bonus damage with crit, so it, it just synergizes it very well. Penetration, over 8,200. Might look a little, but you do realize we do have access to both on-demand major and minor breach, so almost 9K armor shred on the target. So we basically have almost 17K armor shred on somebody. And for our resist on our back bar, spell resist over 29.5k. This actually can go up to almost 32k because of our racial passive. And our physical resist is just at 25k. A little low, I know, I know, I'm fortunate. But we make up for it with insane amounts of damage to the point where if they do damage to us and they drop their buffs, we're going to have to destroy them. So that's what we kind of wanted to do. And for those that do want to run Death Dealers, I got you covered. Your resources should look about the same. If you do want to put more points at a max mag or even max health on this build, you could with Death Dealers. Recoves are about the same. The only thing that will change is your weapon and spell damage. So let's just buff up our weapon and spell damage real quick. So there you go. Weapon and spell damage will go up to 4738, basically. Honestly, the, the main thing about this is that you are not snared into oblivion. And everything else should be about the same. Resistances should be the same. Penetration should be the same. And crit should be the same. So for attributes, we do have 40 points in the mech and 24 points in the health. For the food, we do run Jewels of Mistral, saying that purple food is perfectly fine. For the this we do run the Thief. You know me, you know that I love crit. Because if you're able to crit your whole combo, pugs are getting deleted and sweats have to be just stuck on that back bar and cannot get off that back bar. And it also increases our crit for our healing. But if you feel like you do need a little bit more sustain on the build, then you could run the Atro. The Atro is perfectly fine if you do need some more sustain. And obviously, we are a stage 3 vampire for one. Simple, simple passive. Undeath. The lower health we are, the tanker we become. And for my race, I am a Brenton. Honestly, in my opinion, Brenton is hands down the best open world mag race out there, and especially for BGs too. We do get Gift of Magnus, increase our max mag by 2k. Spell Attunement gives us over 2300 spell resist, which can be doubled when afflicted with burning chill to concuss. And with all the mag DKs and LE stuff running around, you basically have permanent uptime on this and a passive on top of passive. Increases your mag recoil by 130, just here you go for free. But most importantly, what defines Breton is Magicka Mastery. Reduces the Magicka cost of all your abilities by 7%. 
So we basically get 7% coverage reduction to all our mag abilities. This basically almost offsets the fact that we're a stage 3 vampire, which is really strong. Some great alternatives, Kaji could be really strong on this build. We do have high crit. Dark Elf could be okay. High Elf could be okay. Imperial could be okay. If you don't want to range change, I understand on that one. Argonian could be okay as well. Anything outside, kind of maybe stay away from to be honest. All right, but enough, let's go over the sets now. All right, so for the first set we do run, we do run the Vulcan Scoria monster set. Honestly, Vulcan Scoria, there's a lot of sets you can run on this for the monster sets. Honestly, there's a lot, but honestly, I fell in love with Vulcan. Honestly, Vulcan, I felt was perfect for this build. Gives us almost 1500 penetration, which is a lot of damage. When you deal damage with a dot, anything that does a dot, so basically our wall elements, our frost clench, if we have burning or even poison on the build, that would also proc it. You have an 8% chance to launch a meteor at the target. I mean, let's just buff up a 20% weapon exploding. This can go up even higher, by the way. 55, over 5,500 damage to the initial target and reduce damage to any enemies nearby. And the thing about this set, it has a ridiculously low cooldown. Look at that. Every five seconds, this thing can go off and this goes off our weapon to spell damage. And you have to realize we are specced into basically almost full bloodthirsty on this build. So basically the lower health they are, the more we're gonna shred them. And it does flame damage for those pesky vampires, which we are one, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyways, some great alternatives. There's a lot of great alternatives. You could obviously just run battle lurks. Battle lurks is the, the go-to for if you want damage, you come into your ultimate, you're trying to burst somebody. You could run blood spawn. Honestly, blood spawn was really fun. Extra tankiness and extra ultimate to just ban those ultimates. So much fun. The Engine Guardian, honestly, really good for sustain. And it also can give you that Dwemer for body blocking. Or you could run Rocks of the Warp. Or honestly, you could run whatever monster set you kind of want to have fun with, to be honest. Or even Zahn. Zahn's is pretty cheesy, too. So next, we do run actually two-piece training. Weird. I know, right? The reason we run two-piece training is because we do have two slots available. So why not slot training? Look at that. It gives us the most max health for a one-piece. And it gives you the most max mag for a two-piece. If you're trying to mid-max... This is the way to go. You could go one training and one Druid's Bay, but you would lose overall like 300 max resources. This is how you mid-max. Trust me, just, just, just trust. Do you trust me? Trust. <laughs> so next we do run a Mythic on this build and depending what you play depends on the Mythic. So there are two play styles. And if you wanna play BGs or you're a madman in Cyrodiil, the main one I was running and was just insane was Sea Serpent's Coil. This is insane. So if you're in a group in Cyrodiil, the only way I can justify this, or BGs for sure, run Sea Serpent's Coil. It is ridiculously broken. It's, it's just broken. When you take damage at full health, you get a snare, you get 40% damage mitigation, whatever. The main thing is you get snared by 40%, which is kind of crazy. We do have access to on-demand major expedition to offset a little bit of the snare. The main thing is you get major berserk and courage. We get 430 base weapon and spell damage, which can increase with our weapon and spell damage amplifiers and 10% just bonus damage done at all times. This is ridiculous for damage. Since we're a warrior, we're just trying to lock down an area and we just do so much pressure. It's just ridiculous. However, if you do want to play open world or you prefer mobility over this, then I would highly, highly, highly recommend running Death Dealer's Feet. Death Dealer's is really good. It won't do anywhere near as much damage, but you do get your mobility. So if you're trying to kite like a Zerg, this is the go-to mythic. But if you want to run a group or play BGs like I was having fun in, Sea Serpents all day, every day. And for on this build, we actually do run a five piece static set. What does static mean? It means we run it at all times on both bars. So whether we bar swap or not, it's active on both bars. And that is obviously Ice Furnace. Ice Furnace is the go-to for a Warden. Warden, unfortunately, does not have the damage itself, especially Mag Warden, does not have the damage itself, so it has to rely on proc sets, which I guess is fun. That's that's the play style. If you want to rely on proc sets, this is the way to go. Good two to four piece. It's the five piece. When you deal frost damage, you deal an additional eight over 800. So I mean, it's just buff up a 20% weapon spell damage. Look at that, almost 1K. This can go severely up with our, our Reno weapon, which we're about to talk to you about. The thing about this, it does damage in an AOE. So if Joe Bob number one procs it, it will actually do damage in an eight meter radius to hit the other Joe Bobs around it. So it's actually really good AOE pressure. And it has a one second cooldown and it's instant. It does the damage instantly and it's a one second cooldown. You can just see when you put wall elements, basically every tick of wall elements is gonna keep procking this, which is just insane to think about. 
and we do run two arena weapons on this build and what arena weapons are those so for the back bar arena weapon we do run the maelstrom's perfected eye staff obviously non-perfected perfectly fine the only thing the perfected version does basically gives you almost 1200 armor pen that's it, it gives you 1200 almost pen why the perfected or non-perfected the main thing increases the damage wall elements does by 1250 so we're doing 1250 bonus damage with our wall elements to put that in comparison if the master's dual wheel did damage every second the master dual would do about 800 bonus damage every second this one does 1250 because the master's dual wheel goes off every two seconds so this one would do 2500 bonus damage while the master's dual wheel would do 1600 bonus damage if that makes any sense for my fellow nerds i can follow but anyways it just does a lot of damage. It's set and forget. It's just crazy. Especially for pugs. This is why this is a pug slain build. And for our main arena weapon, I mean, you can already tell, but for those that don't know, or for those that just want to hear my voice more, the Master's Perfected Eye Staff. Obviously, non perfected, perfectly fine. The only thing the perfected version does gives you 103 extra weapon spell damage. That's it. Whether perfected or non perfected, the main thing. Reduces the cost of the destructive touch, so basically our, our frost clench or whatever morph you run, costs 10% less, and you get 600 weapon spell damage after casting it for four seconds. Yes, you cast that skill, you get 600 bonus weapon spell damage for four seconds. That is a lot of damage. That, that is a ridiculous loss of damage. You can see why we run it, because that is our spammable, and it, it's just crazy. So the way we do run it, so for the front bar, the master perfected ice staff, obviously non perfected, perfectly fine. For the enchants, I actually don't run an enchant, I run the poisons. I run the minor prophecy poison. Basically, gives a 6% spell crit. Doesn't matter whether we get spell crit or weapon crit. I like these ones because it also reduces their weapon and spell crit by 6%. So basically a form of anti heal and a form of damage reduction because if they don't crit, they don't do bonus damage. But honestly, you could run in whatever you want. You could run a uh, flame enchant there to put an extra dawn, an extra burst. You could put a poison enchant for the poison status effect. Just don't put a weapon of spell damage enchant in the entrance. Do not do that. If you want, you can even put a absorb magic enchant to just steal some extra mag and you know get some extra resources back. Honestly, up to you personally. And sharpen obviously because in PvP penetration is king. And for the back bar, we do run the perfected maelstrom ice staff. Obviously, not perfected, perfectly fine. So we actually did swap it around. So this one is there's two versions you can run it. You can either run infused weapon of spell damage or you could run the the same thing, weapon of spell damage with defending. Honestly, I tried both. Infuse with the weapon of spell damage attack was a lot of damage. It was a ridiculous amount of damage. And you can just basically have this up 100% uptime. It was just insane. The only problem is you are very, very squishy with this. So if you prefer tankiness, then you could run defending. Just swap out the poison damage and champ for a weapon of spell damage. And honestly, you would be very tanky. But honestly, if you're playing BGs or in a group, then I would highly recommend Infused, or if you're the best Magwood in the world, go Infused. Just a lot of pressure. So for the body, we do run the typical 3-3-1. Three, three, three heavy, three light, one medium. So we do run a light Vulcan Scoria Helm, heavy chest of Ice Furnace, a medium shoulders of Vulcan Scoria, a light sash and hands of the trainee, and heavy legs and feet of the Ice Furnace. For the enchants, if you can, try stat all the pieces, and if you can't do that, try stat the big pieces. What I mean by that is head, chest and legs and if you can't do that max mag is perfectly fine just adjust your health attributes at the end and for the traits i do run the infamous six m pen one reinforced yes six m pen one reinforced the only reinforce i have is a heavy chest of the ice furnace reinforced and the rest m pen however if you do want some more heavy reinforced pieces or well fitted pieces go ahead that's what i like about builds we fit to our play style so for the jewelry, depending on how you run it, so if you do want to run the Sea Serpents, is how you would run it. We do run a Sea Serpent's Neck, because it only comes in the neck, duh. And then we do run two Ice Furnace Rings. However, if you do want to run Death Dealers, then we would replace this with Ice Furnace for the neck, and then we would just put Death Dealers on the ring. And there you go. But for this one, we're going to be going off of the Sea Serpents, because that was a lot of damage and it was a lot of fun. So obviously, like I said earlier, we do have a Sea Serpent's Neck and Double Ring of Ice Furnace. So for the traits, if you can, at least two Bloodthirsty. I highly recommend three Bloodthirsty. I unfortunately don't have a third Bloodthirsty because I don't have the transmutes, but I highly recommend at least two Bloodthirsty. For the two Bloodthirsty, put reduced mag cost. For the two Bloodthirsty, reduce mag cost. On the third piece of your jewelry, you can either go infuse with weapon and spell damage, 
or you can go bloodthirsty with weapon spell damage or if you want more sustain or are not a breton then i would highly recommend going a third bloodthirsty with reduced mag cost or if, you're the, or if you think you're the best mag warden in the world you can go a second weapon spell damage enchant and for the food we do run simple jewels of mistral saying that purple food is perfectly fine gives a lot of max health and recover everything but if you got a deep pocket or don't mind spending a little extra or zaka smoke bear hunch gives you about 400 more max health and slight more recover and for the pots just simple tripods i run the crown tripods you can either craft them yourself or get the ones from the crown you know rewards they do the exact same thing it gives us a burst of mag health and stam and it also gives us recover everything but if you're truly balling then you could run the minor heroism pots but those things are very very expensive all right but enough of that mouthful let's go over the cp now So for the CP, if you are in BGs, you don't have to worry about this, but for those that do want to bring this into CP PvP, then I got you. We do run fighting finesse, increases critical damage, critical healing. Focus bending, increases our healing done with single target heals. Master at arm, increases our damage done with direct damage attacks. The reason we run this is because the ice furnace, what's it, what else, our, our spammable, our dawn breakers, our shocks will all get increased by this, so that's why I run this one. And ironclad, reduces our damage taken from direct damage attacks. And for the red CP, typical seal of approval red hash CP. Celebrity increases our movement speed by 10%. Honestly, in my opinion, the best CP in the entire game. Survival instincts, while with a status effect, our core combat skills cost less. Pain's refuge, the more negative effects we have acting on us, the tankier we become. And the last one, obviously, your flex spot. You can either run relentlessness, being so under fear of crisis major protection for three seconds, or you could run sustained by suffering. Well, affected with a negative effect, increase our mag and health and stam recovery by 150. Honestly, personally, up to you. I kind of like relentlessness on this build. It felt like it was just perfect for it. But if you want more sustain or playing solo, perfect alternative. And for the green CP, doesn't ever really matter. Rationer, liquid efficiency, gifted rider, and seize blessing. All right, cool beans. Hope you guys did enjoy that build. Let's just say it out of the way. Mag Warden for 1VX is the roughest time you will have. However, if you want to play in a group or in BGs, Mag Warden is beyond bonkers. I'm just going to say it right now. Beyond bonkers. Gets the seal of approval bonkers certificate from Hexapod. Yes. Or Hexapod, I guess. It just does. You put this build down, especially in BG, since you're going to be having the same targets go after you. Especially like in the Dominations or Crazy King. You can just do so much damage on a pin. Just put your wall elements down and just start spamming your spam wall. And you just do so much pressure on targets. It's so unfair. And if you have your allies with you doing the most damage, the whole point of your build is support damage. You are doing so much suppressive damage that they have to play defensive. Even if you go defensive, you still got your set and forget damage going. So if you got allies beating them down, you're just doing so much pressure. And you have so much kill potential with this build. Against Pugs, you will absolutely shred them. Against Sweats, you, you won't die. And in 1v1 against Sweat, you won't die. You will pressure them so heavily. So if your allies come in and help you, you'll just do so much pressure to them. But if you are playing on 1vx in this build, it is very, very rough, but it is very doable. I have 1vx on every class. It is possible. After getting zerged over for a few hours, you might get you might catch a few 1vxs. <laughs> but however, but you know the rest. For those that just still stick around to the end of the video, Really do appreciate it. If you guys can hit the subscribe and like button, it really goes a long way and I really do appreciate it. Also, support me on Patreon if you want to choose the first video of every month or just support me financially. Follow me on Twitch where I occasionally will stream the PC grind. Just been working a lot and trying to get these PvP build videos out. Trying to work three jobs. It's kind of a nightmare, but I love it. But you know the rest. Hope you did enjoy the build video. Like the video if you liked it. Comment your thoughts and experience with the build. Also, anything I'm going to miss out, what video should you do next? Subscribe for more. But most importantly, stay Zergen.